every time when God has been speaking to us, we haven't had the money, we, haven't, we didn't know how to do it, we had no resources, there were no doors, but when we, when we took the step, you know, then everything opened up. And that is how, how God, he, he works. And I believe that when he spoke to us about Dubai and UAE, I didn't know what it was. And he said, you should go to Dubai and you should start a work together with the churches in Dubai and said, but I don't know anyone in Dubai. I knew one pastor, but I don't know the pastors and I don't know anything about UAE. But you see, when we started, the, I mean, the gospel crusades, we went from nothing to everything. Once we took the step, the money came. When we took the next step, the door opened up. And today, I mean, we're traveling all over the world, reaching people with the gospel of Jesus. It was the same with the TV ministry. When we started the TV ministry, we had nothing. We didn't know how to do. And then when we took the first step, a door opened. Then we took another step, another door opened. And then we took another step and the third door opened. So, so, I mean, when you're going with God and I know that you are pastors and leaders, you know, you can go from nothing to everything and he will help you to make the impossible possible because he's God. <laughs> so, so I believe that even if I'm Sweden today, I believe that the Holy Spirit can come up on you where you're sitting so you can, you can feel the vision and, and it was two years ago, I think, when I was in Dubai, when God started to talk to me. And then one year ago, he came again. And it came as a surprise when he started to talk about this elevation center. And, and I just want to say to you, we are not coming to start a church. We are not coming to start an organization. We are coming to, to help. And, and God is giving me, I mean, a, a, a sermon and a series of teaching that I've been teaching now for, for a long time. And I want to share some points with you because what is important is what I'm writing here. It's, it's all about people. It's, it's always about people. Jesus didn't die for, for real estates. Jesus didn't buy for, die for US dollars. Jesus died for people. God, he doesn't value people. God, he doesn't value money. God, he doesn't value real estates. God, he doesn't value cars. God, he values people. So, so everything that we have been doing the last 30 years, it has had to do about people, how to help people, how to elevate people, how to release the potential of people, how to reach new people groups, how to help the churches. Amen. So, 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 so when we are coming, we are coming for one reason, and that is for people. And I believe also if we value what God is valuing, because God is valuing people, when you are valuing people, God will, he will value you because it's all about people. Amen. So, and then there's another word. We are one body and the lead word in Tom Lilia Ministries is that, I mean, we are in this together. Uh, I have never claimed ownership when it comes to anything, actually. If I would have done that, we would have had thousands of churches today. But I believe in independent churches working together. Amen. So, so, so you don't have to be, I mean, thinking what, what, does he have any kind of second thoughts? No, we don't have second thoughts because what we're doing around the world today, we're doing it in partnership. We're doing it with friends. We're doing it with, with brothers and sisters. And, and we don't claim the, our, the ownership when it comes to nothing. But what we, what we say, it is that we're working heart to heart. Hallelujah. We're working side by side and we are coming to help because we know that when we help people, when we bless people, when we restore people, when we heal people, when we, I mean, release potential in people and churches, then God will bless us. We're not going after the blessing. We're going to help people because when we help people, you know, then God, he will bless us. There is a law. I call it the law of transition. 
if you want to discover your potential. That, I mean, everything has to do with transition. If, if, I, if I do tomorrow what I do today, I will have the results tomorrow as I have today. But I don't want to have the same results tomorrow as I have today. So I must go for transition. And we can read here from Luke chapter 5. It says that, and it came to pass that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake. And just these words, and it came to pass. And you know, everything is either coming to you or passing. That's how life is. And you know, feelings, they are like that. I mean, you can be in love, it's coming, it's going. You, I mean, if you're angry, you're, they, they, I mean, in a bad mood, it's coming, going. Joy is coming and going. I mean, also relationships, you have friends, they're either coming or passing. Your marriage is coming, it's passing, it's measurable things. I mean, if you buy a new car the first day you have it, I mean, it's on its way from you. It's coming and it's, it's passing. It's, I mean, youth, today I'm, I will become 61 this year. You know, I'm not, where, when my, my youth, where, where, well, it came and then it passed. <laughs> I mean, everything is coming and it's passing. And this day, Jesus came. The Bible says, yeah, he just came and saw two ships. I mean, that's how God is working many times. I mean, he's coming. As time passed by, Jesus came. And maybe today, you and I, we have met for a time like this. As it says here, and it came to pass that one day we met in Dubai. I was in Sweden and you were sitting and listening to me because Jesus showed up and he saw two boats. And that's typical for God. One day he's coming. He's passing by and he's saying to Peter, hey, Peter, can I borrow your boat? Can I have the next slide, Rebecca? Because this is the law of the platform. Peter, he saw a boat. But Jesus, he saw a platform. <laughs> you know, well, when Jesus is coming to you today, where you're sitting, I mean, you and I, I can see a pastor, I can see a church, or we can see each other. But when Jesus, he is coming, he is seeing a platform. And this is, this is many times secret uh, behind if you want to release your potential. If you take your boat and give it to Jesus as a platform, I mean, then he will come into you and he will build his ministry through you. So, so Peter, he saw a boat, but Jesus, he saw a platform. And from that platform, he could build his ministry. So, so when he's coming to you today, he's saying, hey, can I borrow your boat? Can I borrow your hands? Can I borrow your body? Can I borrow your mouth? Can I borrow your platform? And when we give our life to Jesus, and then he can build his ministry through us, you know, then the platform you are, it will have no limits. Hallelujah. That's what it's all about, to give your boat to Jesus. That is the law of the platform. Okay, I can have the next slide. Then you have the law of stretching. How to make your potential overflow. Because what, what Jesus is saying to Peter here now, it is that he should launch out again. And you see, Peter, he was a fisherman. He ate fish. He smelled fish. Everything he knew was fish. He lived fish. He, I mean, he, he raised up his sons to be fishermen. His father and his ancestors, they had been fishermen. Everything around Peter was about fish. And he could see when Jesus came that he didn't know anything about fishing because he was a rabbi. You know, and sometimes when Jesus is coming, he will ask us to do things that we have never, ever done before. And he will ask us, I mean, 
Peter, he had to fight everything his experience was telling him about the situation because, I mean, his experience said it's, it's, it's a waste of time to launch out again. And this man, he, he doesn't understand anything about fish. And sometimes when, when, when Jesus is coming us, he will ask us to do something that is it, it's against our experience. It's against logical thinking. It's against everything. And still, he says, you can do it. And I believe that when I'm speaking to you tonight, Jesus is coming. And he, want, he will ask us to do something that we have never, ever done before. And we have no experience how to do it. No one else has done it before. And that, that is... I mean, typical for, for my ministry, and I'm sure that you have experience from this as well. Jesus has come and he asked you to do things you've never done before. And, and, and the, the, the mind is, is, is just crying out and say, uh, saying, this will not be possible. <laughs> and I, I know when, when God came and said, Tommy, I, what do you want from me? And, and, and something came up in my mind and I said, one million souls before 2012. And he said, I will give it to you. And then I didn't know how to do. It was just crazy. No money, no resources, no open doors, nothing. But when we took the step, when we did cast out the net, the fish came. Amen. Can, can you see this? So if you have the next slide here, because you have to be stretched to get more fish. Do you understand me? If you want your church to grow, if you want your ministry to grow, because when he did cast out the net, I mean, it was stretched so much that it was close to break. And sometimes when Jesus is coming to us, he will stretch us for a reason. Why will he stretch us? He will stretch us because he wants us to grow so that we can catch a bigger catch. Amen. As I said before, if you do tomorrow what you do today, you will have the results tomorrow as you have today. But when Jesus is coming and saying, hey, can I borrow your boat? Can, can, can you give your life as a platform for me? And then when he starts to stretch you, you see, you will have a greater catch. And the thing was that when Peter acted upon the word of Jesus, he had now one problem. It was how to get the boat to land. And this is the law of rubbing off. And this is, is the point I'm aiming at when I'm speaking to you tonight. Because, you see, the anointing you respect is the anointing you receive. I mean, when Peter had got all this fish in his boat, he knew I can't land this boat because it's just too much. So he called for his friends and they came, came with their boats. And when they loaded over some of the fish that Peter, he had got into their boats, they got so much fish that they got problems as well. You know, it's something about Jesus. When you give him two fish, you never know what he could do with two fish. And now it was not only one boat, but there were several boats and they had the same problem. How shall we be able to land all this fish? And the other thing was that his friends, they gained favor, not because of what they did, but because of their attitude toward Peter. I mean, there were other boats on the shore. They didn't come out. Some of them, they were stubborn. Some of them, they were filled with envy. Some of them, they were, were, were filled with bitterness. Some of them, they were ashamed because they didn't have anything in their boat and they didn't want to show someone else that. And so, there are so many churches, they are like these empty boats on the shore. Some of them, they, they want that church for themselves, but the church, it doesn't belong to you. It belongs to Jesus Christ. And some of them, they are, are competing and they're filled with envy when it comes to other pastors. And some of them have been bitter. And some of them, them, they are a little bit ashamed. But you don't have to be ashamed for Jesus. 
You see, and that is what I am inviting you to today, because I believe that we are in this together. Amen. I have a boat. Hallelujah. And my boat is full of fish. So if, and I invite you, come, because Jesus, he has given me a great catch. And what I have got, I will give you for free. But you see, I believe in you as well. I believe that you have some fish in your boat as well as I have. So when you're coming with your boat and you sail up alongside with my boat, then what I have in my boat will flow over to your boat and what you have in your boat will flow, uh, will flow over to my boat. That is uh, uh, the, the kingdom-minded way to see uh, the kingdom of God. We are in this together. What I have belongs to Jesus. What you have belongs to Jesus. And what we are supposed to do, we are supposed to help each other. I have a boat. You have a boat. I mean, you have a potential. I have a potential. I mean, my whole life for 30 years, we have been releasing potential in individuals, in churches, in organizations, in countries, and in cities. You know, there are cities around the world that we have turned upside down. I mean, they, they were, I mean, they, they had no future. The poverty was, I mean, overwhelming. And they didn't know what to do. And we were invited. We came with a gospel campaign. And everything turned around and the city started to flourish. And poverty was on its way back. Can you see this? Because if you're coming with a generous heart and saying, hey, Peter came to me. No, it's just saying, hey, Jesus came to my boat and I gave my boat to Jesus. He used it as a platform. And now I have so much fish. I don't know what to do with a fish. Can you come and help me? Because I have to land the fish I have. And then you're coming but, and you're saying, but Pastor Tommy, I'm from Dubai and I also have a boat filled with fish. Well, if you give me some of your fish, I will give you some of my fish. And together we will land the catch. And you know, when it came to shore, then Jesus said, leave it all and follow me. <laughs> and I've been asking myself, why did you do it? I think that they thought like this. Okay, I gave him the boat. And I got all this fish. What will happen now if I give him also the fish? Because Jesus, he will bless us. And that is the word that I've got for this time. That we should work together, sail out together. We shouldn't be competing. Instead, we should be working together. Hallelujah. And now I will come to the vision that God gave me. Can I have the next slide? The vision behind the Elevation Center. We want to help, a help that belongs to everybody. As I said, we don't claim any kind of ownership in what we're doing. We want to help your church. We want to help your ministry. We want to help you as individuals. And we want you to tell us how we can help you. And then we will see how we can do because in in one way or the other we will rub off what god has given us we 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 will want to come to release the potential that you have in your church your ministry your life in your family or in your life the second is that we want to help to release and elevate because that we we believe that ele anyone can be elevated we believe that the kingdom of God is an expanding kingdom. Amen. So, so we believe that we can help people. Since more than 30, I mean, I, 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 before I got a pastor, uh, before I became a pastor, I was a teacher. The first class I got, it, before, it was before I, I became a trained teacher. I was, I think I was 18 years old. And the school came and asked me if I could help them because it was a bunch of wild kids. 
And, you know, no one saw anything in these kids, but I saw the potential. And when, when they felt that I could see their potential, they, they let me help them. They let me into their lives. And that's how it's been since then. Since then, I met so many people and I can see potential in everybody. Potential is something beautiful. People is something beautiful. You are beautiful. I mean, the, the people that I've met in Dubai so far, they are so beautiful. And I can see that potential. And many times it's not developed. They don't know how much potential they have. So I think it's, it's, it's a grace from God to be able to release other people's potential. That's, I mean, the most beautiful picture I know is to see someone who discover the potential and then help them to release it. See them, see how they are flourishing. See how the potential is coming out. And then you are elevating them. So when I'm talking about an elevating center, it's not a center in that way. I mean, we are coming just to, to help and to elevate. And then the third thing is we want to help to stretch, to take a new step in reaching the unreached. Because I believe, and listen to me, I'm back here for now. I believe that together we can make history. And maybe next time, if I'm able to come down, and if you're saying yes tonight, maybe we can gather even more churches and pastors together. And I will share the vision how I mean now, because there are so many unreached tribes around the world that have, they have never ever heard the gospel. If I can get the next slide. You know, you have the greatest potential ever in history to complete the Great Commission. And I will ex explain, because you can read here, I'm writing that not saved is not the same as unreached. You see, an unreached ethnic people group, it's an ethnic people group that never heard the gospel. If we're coming to North Africa, they are not saved today, but they were reached, they have been reached. Uh, the whole of North Africa was under the gospel until the year of five or six hundred, something like that. But the mission that God has put in my heart, it is to go to those ethnic people groups that have that never ever heard the gospel of Jesus. You see, because when, when, when Jesus is coming back, you can see what right here, no ethnic group will be able to say, we never got the choice. Uh, because if, if there would be an ethnic people group and Jesus is coming back and they are judged, then they could say that, hey God, you are not righteous. You are not fair because we never heard the gospel. So, so therefore, what Jesus is saying that the gospel, it must be preached to every ethnic people group around the world. And that is what we are really in. In Nepal today, we have been mapping Nepal, and we know how many people groups there are in Nepal, and we are going to each one of them. I see every ethnic people group like a, an empty box. So when we reach them, then we can tick the box one less. And they're saying that there is between eight to 5,000, maybe it's 5,000 tribes left. Listen to me now. 5,000 ethnic people groups that have never, ever heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. why, why I'm telling you this? You, uh, just give me some more minutes. I will, I, you will understand what I mean. Because you see, since we started in Nepal, let's say it was 5,000, then we reached one group. Okay, then we could tick that box. Now there are 4,999 left. And then we reached the next group. Now there are 4,998 left. And then we, are, I mean, we think we reached about 25 people groups in Nepal. So if there was, 5,000 when we came, now today there are 4,975. And then when I was praying, God said, you know, you UAE, Tommy? Yes, I said, 
That is the place in the world where there are most nations represented. So I was thinking like this, where in the world today do we have most language groups represented in the UAE? So, so, so what I would like to do, I would like to challenge you to take another step when it comes to your mission work, because I know that many of the churches, they are doing mission in return. So, so I mean, the, the city you came from or the tribe you came from or the language group you came from, you are doing evangelistic outreach in that part of the world. But what if we could take it another step further? If I can have the next slide, Rebecca. You know, I mean, look at me now. If we could connect instead of competing, and that is mean that we are working together. Connecting instead of competing. Churches competing, I mean, it's like Jesus would fight himself. We can't compete because we are in this together. Okay? And number two, we, we start elevating by releasing the potential of the local church in UAE. That means that the potential, it will grow. Then number three, mapping the areas of the world we are connected to. Listen to me now, because you have, you have your language groups, you have your place in the world. Like now we are working in India, in Karnataka. And I'm part of a mega church in Bangalore. What we will do now, it is that we will map Karnataka. So we can see this language group, this ethnic group, this ethnic group, and this ethnic group, they have never ever heard the gospel of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And what we will do next, it will, we will developing a strategy to stretch to a signed ethnic group in Karnataka. So maybe 10 years from now or five years from now, we can say, hey, Jesus, all the ethnic groups in Karnataka, they are now reached with Jesus Christ. Then we, we could start mapping area after areas in the world. Amen. And then we can see that here is an unreached group. Here is another unreached group. Here is another unreached group. And then we develop a strategy. And then we ask one church, can you take responsibility for, responsibility for that unreached people group? Because that is close to where you came from. Can you take responsibility for that unreached people group? Because that is close to where you came from. You know, maybe 10 years from now, we can have reached hundreds maybe thousands of unreached people groups. That's not what I mean by, I mean, we can make church history. Maybe for a time like this, we are coming together and then we will keep records and continuing to research and map. And, and if we do this, when, when I saw it the first time, I said, Jesus, if there is only 5,000 tribes left, then it is possible if you give me the tool, hallelujah, amen. If you give me the tool, then it will be reachable within my lifetime. It was actually a blow. Can you understand me? I, I can feel the anointing is coming now. It is possible within my lifetime, within your lifetime, but this is not one man's work. And that is my question tonight. Would you invite us? I'm not asking anything. We are coming to, to help you to elevate what you have. We're coming to release whatever the potential we can see that needs to be released. We're coming with our boat and we're saying, my boat is filled with fish. Can't you come with your boat, sail up alongside with mine, and then we will share what God has given us together. Because one thing is clear. Jesus is always on move. One who, what he started to do 2,000 years ago, that's where the flow is. That is where the power is. That is where the anointing is. So when, when you, I mean, many times we're singing, I want to step into the river. Well, the river is going to the unreached. Hallelujah. So, so, so when you are coming with your ministry, you are your church to reach the unreached, 
then your church will grow. Then your ministry will grow. Then your finances will grow because then you are doing what Jesus is doing today. Hallelujah. But you know, this is not something that we can do by ourselves. This is not something we're doing by competing because there is only one body. Hallelujah. And you are my brothers and you are my sisters. And we have one Lord and we have one leader. So then before I'm letting you in now, the next step here would be together. We want to set up Zoom appointment with as many as possible. So if you're listening to me now and you want to talk to me, then uh, our director, uh, Matt Shibu, you can talk to him and we will set up a Zoom meeting so we can speak face to face. Together, we can join hands for research and mapping. And together, well, the ownership, who will be the ownership of this? The ownership belongs to all who are involved. And you have uh, our director with you now, Matt Shibu, and you can see his, his email address here as well, matt.shibu at tomalilia.org. Amen. This is what God has put on my heart. And I hope that you feel my heart because, I mean, when I got saved, I was 28 years old. I was raised up in a, a very, very secularized family here in Sweden. And then when I was 28, one night, Jesus came to me in a light, in the same way he came to Saul on the way to Damascus. That night, he changed my life. I had no problems. I had a good life. I had a career. And so did my wife. But everything changed. And since he came, we have been, I mean, we're giving it 100%. Because this was how I was thinking. Either I give Jesus 100% or I can live in the world. There's nothing between. There's nothing as, I don't want to have a lukewarm life. So, so all, I mean, all the time we have been pressing the limits. Where can we go now, Jesus? How can we expand what we are doing more? How can we reach more people? How can we help more people? How can we do more? And God led my steps this year to Dubai and to you. So I don't think that you are listening to me now today by coincidence. I believe that the Holy Spirit led you to... I mean, this little small talk we have today, because he will touch your heart. And I believe that you have felt my heart today, because I felt the power going out through the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah.
it's it's time to come together because one can put a thousand to flight, two can put ten thousand to flight. It's there's a supernatural multiplication, and what I see in Dubai is it's a, a spiritual hub, if you like. And a hub is something in the middle of a wheel that holds it together, and the spokes go out. And the spokes go out from to, to from Dubai to many, many nations that are represented there. Um, and you have so many migrant workers who come for a period of time and then go back. That's another part of the equation, that when people are get trained up, then they can go back to their own language groups and also start to evangelize them. Now, I know many of you sitting there tonight, your heart is for Dubai or for the UAE. That's where you've come to. But what we're saying is now, here is a facility. And even you as a pastor, if you don't, if you say, well, I don't, I'm not too sure about this. Um, I can tell you now, there are people in your church who have been waiting for an opportunity like this to start to reach out to their own people. Um, and it is unique. It's for such a time as this. There is such upheaval around the globe. And we have to, I mean, as I, as I came to the church here tonight, I was listening in the car um, to a ministry tape and and the, the pastor was talking about um, Matthew 24, 14, you know. We have to, this gospel of the, the kingdom must be preached unto all nations, unto all people groups, and then the end will come. And we've always said up to now, somebody else will do it. This is the great thing. Well, I'll pray about it. And you never hear from anybody again. But now it's there's a call to action. And as Pastor Tommy said, you're either in or you're out. But you could be in with your prayer groups. My, my wife is, is a, a great inter, intercessor and, and a prophetic woman. So she's involved with many intercessory groups. It is so important that you you maintain that. And I applaud, um, especially some of the women there that, that introduce themselves to what you're doing. We need that prayer cover. We have to do that. And so that's a great work. But this is just putting the nets out a little bit more to reach these groups. Um, when I did some research um, about Dubai, when I first came with Pastor Tommy last year, I was just amazed at the people groups there. I mean, I've been in ministry in Africa. I lived in Africa for, uh, for many years. I've been to India, you know, all over Europe, uh, the, the Americas. And there is just such a hunger for the things of God, for the truth of God. And, and hand, on, hand on my heart here. I'm coming with Pastor Tommy. Um, and to say, we are coming with a vision. There's no entry price. We're not saying you sign up. It'll cost you $500. It's not that at all. This is something that we believe as we step out, God is giving us the resources to share with you. The fish, as your boat comes alongside this ministry's boat, then there'll be an overflow. That's what it's all about. The anointing runs down. Everybody wants to preach to thousands, but they won't preach to their neighbor. Everybody wants to reach the masses, but they never tell anybody at work that they're a Christian. And the time for that is, is over, you know? One of my pastor friends in Africa used to talk about submarine Christians. They come up on a Sunday morning and then they go back down and you don't see them for a week. The time for that is all over. And so I would encourage you, connect with Pastor Matt there. Give him your details, okay? Pray for us. Pray for Pastor Tommy that we can come as quickly as possible to Dubai because there is a time. People say, oh, well, I'll put it off. And I think one of the most subtle, um, what can you call it? The most subtle thing that the devil uses is something called procrastination, putting off to tomorrow what you can do today and actually what you know you must do. You know when God is on your case and he's nudging you to do something. You know that anointing of the Holy Spirit that says, yes, move forward, move forward. So don't let this opportunity pass you by. Pray about it. Say, Lord, do you want me to be involved? 
Get hold of Matt. Have a Zoom conference with Pastor Tommy. Hear his heart on a one-to-one basis because it is so important that we come together and that you realize the the importance of of the time. Um, So we love you. We appreciate you. We're praying for Dubai. We're praying for the pastors that already we're in touch with there. They're part of a little steering team that that has come together, that the Lord has, has pulled together. And so... Lift up your eyes, it says. The harvest is white, you know, or the fields are white unto harvest. There is a big harvest out there, and we are starting to have a, we believe, implement a movement that will reach these unreached people groups. Thank you, Johnny.